Hey guys, so for this game review, yes, a game review that I really rarely ever do, um, I'm going to talk about the game Super Mario 3D Land. It's a Nintendo 3DS game. This is my game cartridge for it. This is the back side. Um, in Super Mario 3D Land, you guys, uh, this was either one of the first or, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's the very, very first, but it's one of the first Nintendo 3DS titles of a Mario adventure game. Uh, I know that there's a new Super Mario Brothers 2, which I'm pretty sure came out after this one. Uh, and I know that there's a Luigi's Mansion 2 for the 3DS. But anyway, with Super Mario 3D Land, kind of like any other Mario game, um, you basically get... Mario rescuing Princess Peach from Bowser in the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, kind of like Super Mario Galaxy, there's like gravity, manipulation, um, it, you know, not the exact kind, like not like you're in outer space, but you can definitely tell there's some gravity rules that they are playing around with with this one. Um, one would probably guess that, you know, maybe Super Mario Galaxy kind of influenced that. It definitely has a Super Mario Galaxy feeling to this game. Um... Definitely like a Super Mario 64 and a Super Mario Brothers 3 feel. Uh, the Tanuki suit from Super Mario Brothers 3, you know, that raccoon looking suit, uh, is in this game. It definitely works well. They brought it well to 3D, I thought, in this game. Uh, I don't think we got the Tanuki suit in um, a Mario title since Super Mario Brothers 3 when this came out. Uh, so it was very interesting to see that suit come back. Um, Unless you count like Super Mario Advance 4, which basically was Super Mario Brothers 3 re-released, uh, and Super Mario All Stars, uh, but like I said, it's basically like like I said, just Mario um, rescuing Princess Peach from Bowser, and there's a lot of like cube levels, like you know jumping over cubes that are moving a lot, and uh, you know it, basically if you remember any of like the classic worlds like uh you know from super mario brothers 3 you're, of course you're going to have like the pyramid world you're going to have the ice world the grass world uh so you know different kind of worlds that you enter like every time you beat a world you go to a different kind of world uh like other games basically world 8 there's always kind of eight worlds in these games um you know you get a bowser world at the end which basically is like bowser castle themed levels for that world uh, but I guess as far as what makes this title stand out compared to other Mario titles is the 3D effect for the 3DS. Uh, it has kind of like a digital 3D look uh, that you can actually control with a slider on the 3DS. Uh, it has This game has very good 3D effects for that system. Um, you can turn off the 3D effects if it kind of hurts your eyes after a while. Uh, I have actually done that the further and further I've gotten to this game. I did beat it technically. Uh, but let's just say when you beat the game, let's just say there's more to it than that. You'll unlock some things that make you realize that the game isn't quite over yet, that there's still more you can do once the game is done. Um, but that's all I'll say if, for those who have not played the game yet, uh, which, which is kind of shocking because this game I think is about two years old now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, you guys. I think, um, you know, like I said, great 3D and graphics in this one. Uh, it maintains classic elements from Super Mario Bros. 3, from Super Mario World, from Super Mario Bros., even Super Mario Bros. 2 at some points. Um, there, there's even a Super Tanuki suit. So, like, let's say you've played a level multiple times. Uh, you know, you're, you're just not beating it. It's just a really difficult level. Like, let's say you've tried it 10 times now. You've lost 10 lives because in this game... Uh, you can save your progress and like let's say you know you, you got 50 lives built up from all the one-ups you've gathered um, if you've played the level like 10 or 15 times what they'll do is they'll give you a super tanuki suit which um, it, it's this the same tanuki suit that you have if you found in a question mark block box playing the game but with the super tanuki suit you, you basically can hit enemies like a star would uh you're invincible in some areas like you can't touch lava that would kill you like any other level of the game but like you can run through things uh normally things that would normally either take you down a step so like if you have a fire flower you go down to regular mario and then you go down to tiny mario uh with the super tanuki suit it doesn't really have that unless you do something severe like lava or something then it starts to go away um, but it's kind of helpful because like if you played a level uh, several different times and you just can't beat it and it's been 10 lives now that you wasted just trying to complete the level, it is very helpful, specifically toward the end when the levels start to get more difficult, which, 
I'll get here here in a minute as to one of the negatives about the game. Uh, this game is really addictive. There's a ton of content in here. It's one of those games that it's one of those weird titles where you think it's going to be a short game. You're just going to play right through it. You're going to you're going to beat it in a week. Uh, but actually, there's a lot more content. Like like I said, after the eight worlds are done, there's actually some things that you unlock that make you realize that the game's actually longer than it really is. So I would definitely say for a handheld Mario game, this is definitely one of the longer handheld Mario games for sure. Um, I know Super Mario World is, yes, considered one to be one of the longer ones. Um, but this game is pretty long for what it is. Uh, it's just, like I said, really addictive, a ton of content. Um, for the negatives, guys, near the end of the game when you're in World 8 on out, I should say, uh, so World 8 on out, I think the film become the game becomes abnormally difficult. Like it, it's it was really easy from the first seven worlds, like, oh, I'm just breezing right through this thing. Then you get to world eight, specifically toward the end of world eight, and the game gets like really, really, really difficult. And that's actually how I found out about the Super Tanuki suit is once you've played a level multiple, multiple, multiple times, the game just eventually gives you the super tanuki suit. Uh, and even then, like, some of these levels, specifically, like, the final fight with Bowser is really, really difficult, and it takes a long time to finish. Um, one thing I didn't like that Nintendo did with this one also is, uh, you know the high jump abilities that you get for Mario? Like, let's say, you know, you duck down, and then you press the jump button, and he'll jump really high. It's in the game, but, like, it's a very, very small high jump, um... The jump that where you're while you're running and then you hit the jump button, you know, he kind of does like a jump skip thing. Uh, it's a lot shorter. It's, it used to be a really long length he would jump at, but now Mario barely jumps at all with that ability. It's in the game, but like it's a much shortened jump. And I think if they kept what Super Mario Galaxy had and what Super Mario 64 had as far as the jumping abilities go, I think this game would have been much more fun and much more fair with those other Mario titles, because I almost felt like they shortened it just because the game was a little bit easier, or maybe they tried to challenge the gamer, or, or what, but yeah, I, I think the shortened jumps kind of ruined the gameplay, just because I'm so used to the longer jumps from the previous Mario games, um, so I really wish they worked on the high jump abilities for Mario, because it almost kind of ruins the, the gameplay experience because of that, um, but overall, guys, I do give Super Mario 3D Land a 9 out of 10. Like I said, there is some problems near the end of the game where it just gets abnormally really difficult. It just kind of comes out of the blue as, like, this really easy game, and then you get to the near the end of the game, like, whoa, wow, where'd this hard difficulty come from? Um, and like I said, the high jump abilities, there's some where, like I said, it, they really should have made the jumps a longer length for Mario, um, just because... You know, some of the previous games did that better, specifically Super Mario Galaxy. But like I said, guys, if you own a 3DS or plan on getting one, uh, Super Mario 3D Land is a lot of fun. Uh, not too heavy in the storyline department just because we've seen this Mario story tons of times. But it's a really fun Mario game to play on a handheld. It's very graphically powerful for a handheld game. Um, so I had a lot of fun playing Super Mario 3D Land, you guys, and the thing is I'm still not done with it. There's a lot of things I can still do with this game, so I don't have to put it down forever quite yet. Uh, so 9 out of 10 for me, you guys, very fun 3DS game.